those wainscoting that I had stained and then sealed, I painted them the blue to match the wall. And I don't think that's going to work. I think it's too light in the color. But I like this contrast. So I think I'm going to take all these little tiny, tiny pieces of wood and I'm going to repaint them white so it'll look like this because I like this. And I should have realized that in the first place and just painted them white. But I thought the blue would look better. But it's so light in color that it's not really anything. So I'm going to... So... Let's just go ahead and get going on this because it is a long process painting all these little tiny sticks. And hopefully this is the right color now. But I guess if it's not, then we'll reevaluate them again and make a final decision. But I think this is the right choice now this time. Because I can't keep painting these tiny little sticks because we're going to get such a, a paint build up on them that they're just going to be impossible. They're going to look terrible and so this has to be the last change I made to them. So the Wayne's coating is up and it's drying and once it gets fully dried I have the trim for it going up here and once I get that on then I will go ahead and repaint. Try and fill in some of those gaps. Now we're going to be working on the window. I have the trim recut to shape. So we need to try and get it centered so it fits. That looks good. I think that's where we'll start. Is the top one and get it taped on. Try and get it equally centered. Without spreading that glue too much around. I have that there. A little piece of tape on there to hold it. And I'll take the next piece on the other side. I hope that's straight. No, it's not. That's better, but let's that's where it needs to be. That's pretty close. So we'll go ahead and put the glue on this little piece here because that's where it will connect to the top. And I'll spread it down here. I don't want too much because I don't want it oozing out the sides because this stuff dries yellow. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and put a piece of tape on that to hold it temporarily. And then we'll go ahead and get this piece on. Again, we'll put glue up here. We have a light coating of glue on. 
We'll get our corner close to perfect as we can. him in place. Let's see how it fits down here. I'd say it looks pretty darn good. Let's get some glue on this guy. This one we're going to have to put glue on these two sides because they need to glue onto the side of the window trim. Oh, finger just went in the glue. Okay. And it looks really good. Press it in there tight. And this one we can tape here and up through the window because it's say we're really close. We're going to tape this down as tight as we can so it grips really tight. This we're going to loosen up this tape. Make sure it's pushed up against there tight. Tighten him down. Loosen this tape. Make sure it's pulled tight. Okay, we're going to let this, I need to clamp that. So we want it really tight to press that down because we can see this one. And this one feels like it is, but we can see that crack there, so. All right, now we'll go and check the trim for the Wayne's coating, see how that's drying. You know, I had macrame this for a shower curtain, but That looks kind of cute for a bathroom curtain, don't you think? I think I like that. Because I am crocheting a lacy curtain with this yellow as I watch TV at night. But I think I really like this might be a better idea. Um, We could pull it to the side or pull it to the side. I don't know. I think I'll continue with the crocheting that I'm doing. And because um, it's just one panel here, I have to go back and crochet another panel for the other side. So I think I'll continue that, get it to the length I want and see what it looks like. I don't think well, this might be long enough for a shower curtain. You know, just to wrap around the bathtub. I should maybe... Yeah, that should be long enough. We'll see. All right, our paint is dry. So let's go ahead and spread some glue on our trim. get that on the top of our wings coating and we'll hold it down a little bit and I see it's not the best 
of my, I've got gaps. So what I think I'll do is I'll get this all glued on <clears throat> and then tomorrow I'll spread some white caulk and I can paint that caulk. So now this, we have a little gap. We have a little gap right here. So we need to cut a piece just for that. And we'll put the piece that we need to cut right up to it. And then I'll mark it. Take it out and cut it. I'm going to cut it just a little bit long. And if we mess up, we have a little bit left. So I'm going to erase my pencil mark. And let's see how good we did if it fits. I think it's good enough. So let's go ahead and glue this in. And get it there. Yeah, we can see right here, I had a bit of a crack, so I had to shave a little piece off one of these and whittle it down and push it in there to fill that crack up. So the paint is peeling off that. I'm going to have to repaint that. So I think I'll just go ahead and rub silicone across the top of it to fill in these gaps. And then when the silicone caulk or the acrylic caulk is dried, then I'll go through and I'll repaint this whole thing and try and make it a nice smooth appearance. But I think it looks really nice and I can just see a little picture over here or maybe uh, a mirror over the vanity and then we'll have the commode here and the tub right there. So and then I'm not sure I do have a plan for the flooring. It's going to be a bit of a job though. I want to take some uh, concrete that I use for the fireplace front and I want to spread it around and then try and form it into a tiles or slate rocks and see if I can get it to lay on the floor and then um, we would have to figure out something to go with for the grout. Um, I'm not sure I have to do a little bit of thinking about this, possibly because the, the, uh, the concrete will come up a grayish color. We could just use the white silicone caulk and put it down and then put our slate stones across that. And then when that has all cured, I can seal it with a polyurethane finish to make it a soft shine to it. I think that might work. I'm going to play with that idea a little bit. Uh, and see if I can get this done. But for now, the kitchen is done. I have all the trim on it. It's all trimmed in. And I, we need to move on because until we move in, then we'll have to uh, start thinking about kitchen appliances, the stove, refrigerator, the sink, kitchen cupboards, and we need to, our imaginary people will need to go grocery shopping so they can fill the little pantry and the refrigerator and <laughs> kitchen or living room towel or bathroom towels. And yeah, we have a whole lot of doing once we get these rooms done. So I'm going to go ahead and put another piece of flooring on the living room floor. I've already put two pieces on today, but I'm going to go ahead and try and speed this up a little bit so then we can come back and get the trim put up on the floor and the ceiling for the living room. And then this, and then we can get the stairway installed and then this room will be done and we'll, we'll have the, the first floor done. Then we can move up to the second floor. Uh, okay. Um, 
So we're going to stop here for today to give this stuff all a chance to dry because if I, I rush it, something may start falling off. So we'll call it a night and let the glues all dry. Good morning. I have two pieces of hardwood flooring glued down this morning and now we're going to try and fix this so I like it better. We're going to take some multi-purpose clock. It is white. It is paintable. Spread it on this piece of wood and see if we can't get this to fill up the holes at the top, the crack at the top. I really don't like that. So I'm putting a little bit like this on and then I'm just scraping it across. And it seems to be working pretty good. I'm not going to worry about the, the cracks between the pieces itself. I just don't like how this top trim ended up so gappy and I think that's going to look pretty good. Need a little more caulk here. Let's spread on there now. Let's take some toweling and wipe this excess off. Okay, I think that'll look nice. Um, once that caulk gets dry, I'll go ahead and repaint this white. Yeah, I think that looks good. So I crocheted. This is one panel. I don't know if that's going to work. That might be too much yellow, but it was for one half of the window. And I don't think that's going to work either. It's too bulky. It's too yellow. So what are we going to do with it? Do we have a rug? Starch it up, block it, stiffen it, so it'll lay flat. That might work. Rats. We'll just put him aside for now. For now, I have a good idea for this floor. And what I want to do is take and make a, a uh, form. If I've learned anything from my fireplace mantle, it's start with a form. So I'm going to take the measurements of this room. And we're going to see if I have scrap wood to make a form for it. And then we're going to pour some concrete. And I want to make it very, very thin thin and see if I can't make a tile floor out of the concrete because I don't want everything to be hardwood floor. I have no more scrapbook paper that looks like it would work for a bathroom floor. I don't have any. So it is one, two, three, four. It's five and seven eighths. And I don't know what to do about here. I guess we can always put a piece of something here like you do if, when the floors hop. I don't know how far in is it? Six. Seven and three quarters. Let's go see if we got some scrap lumber to make a rectangle that shape. Because I cut this, my eggshell flooring I was going to make, I haven't cleaned it up or anything. I just been trying to get this house built. And it just looks goofy. Maybe if I were to use white eggshells, that might work better with like a dark colored grout. But I don't have a dark colored grout. And I kind of wanted to use what I've got. So 
we have a couple options. I can go ahead and make the form that I just measured for, and we can make a concrete, thin concrete base and lay some eggshells in that. So then the eggshells, the white eggshells, would be the slate, and the concrete would be the grout to support the eggshells. That is an option. The other option is to pour the concrete, divvy it up into squares, little squares, and then uh, um, but we wouldn't make them all the way through. So it would just look like they're divided into squares. And we could put a sealer on that to see how that, that would work. Or we could go ahead and use the concrete and uh, make little tiles and use caulk for the grout in between the tiles. That is an option. And then seal that. So we have three options to do, all of which are labor intensive. So the first place to start is going to be to try to find a form. So that's what I'm gonna do is go through my scrap wood and find a form to fit the size of that floor. All right, we have some concrete. We have some old sturdy sticks. Let's mix this concrete up. Let's see what we've got. Oh, I added way too much water. This is the area of the bathroom floor. And this is the stuff I, I used to make our fireplace front. I want to try and dye it this color because this is the color that is very close to what's on our wall. So let's just, for the fun of it, see what happens. Not much. Let's just empty the bottle in and and we can rinse this out and throw it away. I think that was the end of it anyway. Okay, we can wash that, throw that in the recycling. And Just start out by, I think these might be going to be too big, but maybe we can always break these once they're set and get more of a random, maybe if we put plastic on this stick. pretty good. thinking if this works so we can uh, lay down a layer of caulk and put our slate stones smooth it out a little bit. Maybe I should make some more concrete and pour in here. So we have enough for 
to work with. Might get lucky and this might work the first time around. And I think I'll just make the rest of this along the outside because it's still on the plastic wrap. So it won't stick to the paper, but it will give us more with a really, really straight edge. Ooh, this would be good. I have one for the corner here. Okay, let's spread these out here. Okay, we're gonna leave this dry and then we'll come back in a bit and see how it's doing. So adding that blue paint did make a difference because here, there, 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 and there is the second batch of concrete I poured and it's definitely a darker color. But I think once it dries, We'll try sealing it with a, uh, the polyurethane and see what it looks like. And we can still use these to make it just kind of at a random pattern. We'll insert these. Well, today is a new morning <clears throat> and I moved this off my form so I could try the eggshell thing on concrete. And this cracked and messed up and just created a problem but you know what we're going to go ahead and we're going to try sealing that anyway just to see what happens I mean, what's the worst that can happen it can't break any worse than it is so let's just spread some around here oh my brush broke Maybe it'll help stabilize it. I don't know. Maybe it'll make it a little more tougher. I don't know. I think it's a waste of time, but let's just see. We said, you know, we probably would break this anyway, just to get chunks and pieces. All right, let's just see how that's going to work there. We'll give it some time to dry and do what polyurethane does. 
Now let's go over here to the eggshell on the concrete. Now that's the one I was really kind of interested in seeing what it's going to do. I think we should probably go ahead and take our form off. Just to see what that looks like. And it looks pretty weak. You know, I don't know how I managed to make a fairy house out of this stuff that has survived, what, three winters, three summers out in weather with no problems. I tried to wipe some of the excess off that, but I think that might work to our benefit because it looks like it's kind of in the tile. So it doesn't look so much like eggshells. And let's just go ahead and seal some of this up. And this high points around the edges here, if this actually works, We'll go ahead and take a file and try and shave that down. So we're not going to worry too much about that right now. A big old piece of concrete in my stuff. see any other way of getting this on here any faster. Maybe if we were to take a stick here like this and just kind of this excess polyurethane might also help to uh, fill in any ditches that I made because I didn't level the concrete off really well last night. All right, let's go ahead and spread more of this on here. Just because we're cleaning up our can, I have to go somewhere with it. But what's nice is you can't tell, like right here and right here is the stuff I did not add the light blue paint to. And you can't, so the paint didn't make a bit of difference. Unless something miraculous happens with this polyurethane on it. All right, here it is. I've it's still not dry. It's got a lot of, you can see where it's cloudy. But let's just see what happens. Oh, I made it too wide. How's that going to go in? How's that going to look? I'm going to have to, oh, and I busted it. Got a big crack there and a big crack there. I'm going to have to, I think, get my file and try and clean that <clears throat> clean that edge off a little bit so I can make it a little bit smaller. So we're going to put this back over here. The other one is all busted up. So I don't I don't know. I suppose we could continue to break it up into pieces. Try and put it in. Ooh, I just broke it in half. You know, I made a fairy house using this stuff a couple years ago. 
and the stuff is impossible to break out there. I don't understand the problem now. It's just like grainy sand. Is concrete go bad? All right, let's go in here now. Hopefully she's going to go. Once we get this in, there's no taking it back out. So where is it stuck? Right here. <laughs> Gee, I don't know, guys. I lost a couple pieces here in the trash can. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, that one goes there. I don't know. I'm going to have to, to um, think about this here. There it is. Okay, so if we go in like this, how is this going here? Like that? Okay. There. All right. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's leave that sit for a little bit and evaluate it later. <laughs>